Doris watched her son, Bob, depart on a classified military assignment with unwavering faith in his safe return. However, when two soldiers arrived at her doorstep bearing a farewell letter from Bob, her world was shattered. The contents of the letter bewildered her, compelling her to verify its authenticity. Under the cover of night, Doris, assisted by her siblings, clandestinely exhumed her son's grave, driven by the desperate need for answers. What they uncovered inside the coffin defied all expectations, leaving Doris in a state of disbelief. This gripping tale of truth will render you speechless, keeping you perched on the edge of your seat until the very last word. For months, Doris and her determined team had relentlessly pursued the truth, navigating the eerie confines of the cemetery under the veil of darkness, guided only by the faint beams of their flashlights. Despite the weariness settling upon her shoulders, Doris remained resolute, knowing they were on the brink of revelation. With each passing moment, anticipation swelled within her, propelling them deeper into the earth. Braving the frigid night and the oppressive darkness, Doris spurred her companions onward, their collective determination serving as their guiding light. We're almost there, Doris declared, her voice pulsating with resolve. Just a little further. After what felt like an eternity, the unmistakable sound of shovels striking wood reverberated through the night, signaling their triumphant discovery. With bated breath, they paused, their gazes locking in a shared moment of hope and anticipation. After hours of tireless labor, they sensed they were on the brink of discovery. With each shovel of dirt carefully removed from the coffin, their hearts pounded with anticipation. Aware that whatever lay inside could alter everything, they proceeded with cautious urgency, hoping to unveil the answers they sought. As the lid was gently lifted, revealing the truth within, a whirlwind of emotions swept through them. Watching the coffin being carried from the cemetery, he was transfixed by a mixture of horror and excitement, unable to tear his gaze away from the unfolding scene. It was the moment of reckoning, and he brimmed with anticipation to witness the revelation. Doris, too, felt a surge of triumph as she peered inside the coffin, a blend of curiosity and trepidation gripping her. Despite her lingering doubts, the sight before her confirmed her suspicions. I knew it, she whispered, a triumphant gleam in her eyes. From a tender age, Bob harbored a fervent desire to serve in the military, driven by a vision of becoming a beacon of inspiration for younger generations. Though Doris grappled with apprehension over her son's chosen path, she respected his autonomy, hoping fervently for his safe return despite her misgivings. Despite her initial reluctance, Doris realized Bob's unwavering determination to pursue a military career. His dedication manifested in relentless study and preparation, immersing himself in the intricacies of modern warfare and emerging technologies. Despite her reservations, Doris recognized the fire in his eyes and accepted that nothing would deter him from his chosen path. Eager to embark on his military journey, Bob's enthusiasm knew no bounds as he eagerly anticipated the challenges and opportunities that lay ahead. Bob eagerly rose with the dawn on his 18th birthday, ready to register in military academy. Even though he knew there would be obstacles, he dove headfirst into the adventure, his resolve unshaken, and his focus squarely on achieving his goal. Even though Doris had a hard time making peace with her son's choice, she watched him go with a mix of pride and sadness, knowing he was setting off on a journey full of unknowns. Bob was head and shoulders above his classmates at military school due to his physical strength and determination. His teachers couldn't help but notice his natural ability and dogged determination. As time went on, Bob's rise remained steady. His classmates could tell he was dedicated and focused since he consistently outperformed them. As a result of his unwavering commitment and determination, Bob accomplished the unthinkable by graduating from military school ahead of schedule. Doris shed a tear of pride when she witnessed her son's extraordinary potential in the military. Doris took comfort in Bob's achievements, which reduced the likelihood of frontline deployment, despite her early qualms about them. With Bob's promotion to corporal, the stars seemed to be aligning. His efforts had clearly paid off. Fear for her son's safety burdened Doris when she was deployed to the front lines. As Bob took on the job of corporal, she struggled with the realization that with greater responsibility came greater risk. 
Doris took comfort in Bob's expertise and power, which helped her overcome her concerns. She hoped he would come back unharmed. Following all necessary protocols, Bob penned a farewell letter before he left. This is a common practice meant to provide closure in times of sorrow. In contrast to his fellow soldiers, Bob addressed the mission with seriousness, protecting its contents with the greatest secrecy. The contents of the letter were the subject of much speculation among his fellow soldiers, but Bob took great pride in its personal meaning, which demonstrated the seriousness of his dedication. But even when he set off on his mission, Bob couldn't shake an itch of discomfort. He felt uneasy about the selecting process because of how new it was and because his team members were anonymous. Bob was determined to ignore his concerns and maintain a laser like focus on the work at hand. As he stepped into the unknown, a chilling phantom accompanied him, despite his impeccable professionalism. Bound by duty, Bob understood the imperative of following orders without question, even when shrouded in secrecy from his own kin. As a member of the military, he accepted the inherent risks inherent in his vocation, navigating the uncertainty with steely resolve. His mother remained unaware of his return date, plunging her into a vortex of stress and worry. The ensuing days tested both Bob and his mother, grappling with the nebulous circumstances and the emotional strain it imposed. Despite the adversities, Bob upheld his dedication to his mission, recognizing its intrinsic importance within the organization's framework. Prior to departure, neither Bob nor his team received any regarding their destination, a precautionary measure aimed at safeguarding secrecy and thwarting potential espionage efforts. Blindfolded upon boarding the plane, the additional layer of mystery only compounded the uncertainty. As a young corporal, Bob found himself thrust into uncharted territory, pondering the presence of covert operatives within the organization, necessitating such stringent precautions. Nevertheless, he maintained his focus on the mission, trusting in the wisdom of his superiors. The journey commenced, with Bob and his team braced to confront the unknown challenges ahead. In the ensuing days, they encountered a series of harrowing and bewildering situations, witnessing atrocities beyond comprehension. Bob found himself deployed to a realm starkly different from the sanitized portrayals of conflict and media. Confronted with unfathomable realities, they were compelled to grapple with their mortality in unprecedented ways, leaving an indelible mark on their psyche. Their harrowing ordeal left an indelible mark on them, a stark realization that they would never be the same. With each passing day, Bob's resolve wavered, plagued by mounting doubts about his decision to embark on this mission. Regret gnawed at him, questioning his departure from home and thrusting himself into this abyss of despair. Doubts swirled around his professional path and future prospects, overshadowing his once unwavering commitment as a soldier. Despite his apprehensions, Bob trudged forward, steeling himself for the unfathomable horrors that lay ahead. As they journeyed towards their base camp the following day, exhaustion weighed heavily upon them, longing for respite after days of relentless toil. Suddenly, a deafening crash shattered the tranquility, jolting them into chaos as gunfire erupted around them. Caught off guard, they found themselves ensnared in an ambush, vulnerable and exposed. Bob, gripped by searing pain, struggled to maintain consciousness amidst the chaos. Dimly aware of his team's frantic shouts, he fought against the encroaching darkness, grappling with the realization that this might be his final moment. Thoughts of his mother flooded his mind, a bittersweet lament for all the unsaid words and unfulfilled promises. Bob's heart ached with the knowledge that he would never have the chance to express his love to his mother. With a final, desperate effort, he clung to hope, fighting against the encroaching darkness. Yet, despite his resolve, he could feel himself slipping away, his injuries overwhelming him. Days later, Doris opened the door to find two solemn military officers standing on her porch. Their grave expressions confirmed her worst fears, the weight of their presence suffocating her with dread. The dreaded visit she had both anticipated and feared had arrived, heralding the devastating news of Bob's fate. The officer's sympathetic gazes offered little solace when they delivered the news, leaving a cavernous void in their wake. As Doris welcomed them inside, her heart heavy with grief, one officer presented her with a letter, a testament to Bob's service. Unable to bear the weight of its contents in that moment, she placed it aside, 
seeking solace and solitude to grapple with the enormity of her loss. The officers, understanding her need for privacy, departed, leaving Doris to confront the unbearable truth alone. The military conducted a funeral for the slain soldiers three days subsequent to Bob's departure. Doris was perplexed by the event's postponement when she struggled to cope with the bizarre nature of her son's absence. Her mourning was already complicated, and the unexplained delay only served to heighten her sense of loss and the myriad of questions left hanging after Bob's sudden death. When Doris tried to contact the military for information on the delayed funeral, she was met with frustratingly silent responses. She couldn't escape the increasing disquiet that was plaguing her when she was on her own. Her doubts grew when the days passed, intensified by the noticeable silence emanating from the military. Doris finally decided to face her son's farewell letter because she could no longer bear the uncertainty. She was afraid to delve into his dying words, but she felt driven to find out what he wanted others to know before he died. She hid in her bedroom, holding the letter with shaking hands, her heart heavy. An overwhelming range of feelings swept over her when she turned the pages. Instead of finding comfort or maybe direction, Doris was met with shocking truths. She couldn't help but feel a twinge of disbelief as she realized that the letter clearly included Bob's voice. A priceless relic of her cherished son's last words, she hid it beneath her pillow, intent on protecting its contents from curious eyes. Recognizing that the letter was meant only for her, she made a firm decision to keep its contents secret. Doris lay in bed, sobbing uncontrollably, thinking about how disturbing and unexpected her son's message was. Her long-held faith in the military establishment, which she had revered for its dignity and integrity, was shattered by its implications, which crushed her. Doris, dignified and determined to honor her son's life and sacrifices, found the strength to attend his funeral, despite her anguish and disbelief. Even though she was grieving, the surprising disclosures in the letter intensified her feelings of betrayal and disappointment. Doris was confronted with the truth that serious wrongdoing existed within the organization she had held in high esteem, and she struggled to make sense of these facts in light of her previously unwavering faith in the military. Doris noticed a sense of discomfort emanating from the two soldiers who had delivered the letter as they locked eyes with her. They seemed to be hiding something, either guilt or fear, by moving stealthily and not making eye contact. She wondered if they were also aware of what was in the letter and were now burdened by guilt or regret. Even with the sealed envelope, she began to wonder whether someone had tampered with the delivery procedure because she had reservations about its integrity. Someone might have secretly swapped out the letter in an effort to find out what was inside. Doris felt an overwhelming wave of distrust and suspicion toward the soldiers, as if something was off. After the funeral concluded and guests began dispersing, Doris noticed the conspicuous absence of the two military officers who had kept a watchful eye during the service. Their failure to approach her or offer condolences struck her as peculiar, leaving her with lingering questions about their intentions. Despite the outpouring of support from friends and loved ones, Doris returned home feeling emotionally drained and isolated. The weight of her son's loss bore heavily upon her, compelling her to seek justice for the disturbing revelations within his letter. Yet, she grappled with feelings of helplessness, uncertain of the next steps to take. Acknowledging her need for support, Doris recognized the importance of rallying her siblings together, despite past differences. Determined to honor her son's memory and pursue justice, she resolved to find a way forward, fueled by her unwavering commitment to making a difference. Doris contacted her siblings individually and scheduled a meeting for the next day after realizing she needed their help. She was worried about the likelihood of military surveillance and was very aware of the possibilities of eavesdropping, so she kept details vague during their phone discussions. Her resolve to stand up for her kid and seek justice was unshakable, even though she was terrified. At her older brother's house, Doris gathered everyone together and started to reveal what was in her son's last letter. Her siblings listened in disbelief and grief as she spoke. Her sister, suspecting something was wrong, had anticipated the necessity of bringing the letter along. As they read it aloud, the siblings became even more committed to remembering their brother and facing the disturbing realities it revealed. They realized the seriousness of the issue and realized they couldn't let such abuses go unpunished. 
further investigation and evidence collecting were crucial when they were determined to find out what happened and have those responsible face the music. With a common dedication to their brother's memory, they set out on a quest to discover the truth, despite their best attempts to understand the letter's contents and their brother's motives. They were ready to confront any obstacles that came their way in their quest for justice because they were united. Doris finally brought up the subject that had been bothering everyone behind their backs. Suggesting the exhumation of her son's coffin was a daunting prospect for Doris, recognizing its drastic and potentially contentious nature. Yet, she believed it was the only avenue to unravel the mystery and honor her son's memory. Initially met with horror by her siblings, the idea seemed macabre and disrespectful. However, they acknowledged its necessity in confirming the letter's authenticity and gathering additional evidence for their pursuit of justice. Despite the gravity of their decision, they understood the need for utmost discretion to avoid scrutiny and potential legal repercussions. Aware of the legal and ethical implications, especially concerning military graves, they knew they had to tread cautiously. Planning meticulously, they resolved to conduct the exhumation under the cover of night, minimizing the risk of detection. Fully aware of the consequences if their actions were discovered, they remained resolute in their determination to uncover the truth, even at great personal risk. As they prepared for the operation, gathering tools and devising a detailed plan, Doris's heart raced with a mixture of fear and anticipation as the night of the exhumation drew near. She was paralyzed with panic at the idea that someone would see them and call the police, which could have devastating consequences. Still, her brothers tried to reassure her, trying to calm her anxious nerves, because they knew how important it was for her to have her head held high in the face of all the danger and uncertainty. In complete contrast to her normally composed personality, she and her siblings set out on a journey to uncover the truth and honor their brother's legacy. She had to take breaks throughout the night to collect herself because the trauma had taken a toll on her body and mind. Doris struggled with ambivalence, uncertainty, and tears when she faced the weight of their task when they worked in the dark to uncover her son's grave. In the midst of a maelstrom of feelings, from grief to rage to dog determination, Doris felt her doubts fading as they dug deeper into the cemetery. Driven by the desire to uncover the truth and demand justice for her son, a growing belief that their actions were justifiable began to sink in. Beside her appreciative eyes, she kept a secret promise to her siblings. No matter what they faced, the truth would come out. Doris was unfazed by the dangers they faced. She was determined to complete their goal because she knew it was the only way to pay tribute to her son and find peace in the wake of his untimely death. The inevitable sound of shovels hitting solid ground after long hours of digging signaled their time to face consequences. Under the moonlight's otherworldly light, they uncovered Bob's casket, and Doris felt a rush of emotion course through her as she realized they were about to learn the truth about her son's dying moments. She pondered whether the answers they sought lay within the coffin or if delving deeper would only yield more questions and uncertainty. Despite her apprehensions, Doris remained resolute in completing the mission, understanding it as the sole means to honor her son's memory and find solace after his untimely passing. Alongside her siblings, they meticulously cleaned the coffin's exterior, gradually revealing its contents with cautious anticipation. With the aid of a crowbar, they pried open the lid, the resulting noise echoing louder than anticipated, prompting Doris to cast anxious glances around, fearing detection and its consequences. Despite her trepidations, Doris recognized the necessity of persisting to honor her son's memory and unearth the truth. Stealing herself for whatever lay ahead, she steeled her resolve, pushing aside her doubts. With bated breath, they succeeded in unlocking the coffin, the revelation of her son's body met with a mix of horror and fascination. Though initially steadfast, Doris couldn't shake the nagging doubts that crept into her mind questioning the morality of their actions and whether they should press on. Her brothers, however, remained unwavering in their conviction, convinced they were on the right path to honor their brother's memory and uncover the truth. Determined not to let her uncertainties impede progress, Doris resolved to see the mission through, regardless of the personal toll. As the lid was lifted, revealing the truth within, Doris's composed voice belied the tumult of emotions swirling within her. 
I knew it, she uttered, her words a testament to the complex mix of relief and disbelief she felt. However, as she uttered those words, a solitary tear traced its path down her cheek, a silent testament to the profound depths of her grief and sorrow. Both of her brothers stood motionless, their disbelief mirrored in their frozen expressions when they beheld the unexpected contents of the coffin. They were overwhelmed with shock and confusion, grappling with the implausibility of what lay before them. With heavy hearts, they closed the lid once more, realizing the necessity of laying their brother to rest once again to safeguard his memory and preserve the sanctity of his final resting place. Despite the anguish that weighed upon them, Doris and her siblings recognized the importance of remaining resolute and united in their pursuit of justice. As the night gradually surrendered to the dawn's light, they knew they must complete their task swiftly and depart the cemetery without a trace. Working feverishly, they reverently reinterred their brother, meticulously restoring the grave to its original condition, leaving no hint of their presence behind. With their mission accomplished, they hastily gathered their tools and made their way to the awaiting car parked at the end. Their senses heightened, they noticed a looming, ominous vehicle approaching the cemetery and realized they must flee before discovery. Hastily, they piled into the car and sped off, their hearts racing with the fear of imminent capture. Upon returning home, Doris's brother bid her farewell before departing to his own abode, leaving her grateful for their unwavering support and the risks they had undertaken to unveil the truth about her son. As she closed her front door behind her, she hastened to her office, driven by a fervent determination to document her findings and share them with the world, despite the looming specter of potential repercussions. Nevertheless, she remained steadfast in her resolve to ensure that the truth about her son's death and the unsettling revelations within his final letter reached the world's ears. Seated at her desk, she commenced typing, fervently hoping that her words would catalyze justice for her son and all victims of corruption and injustice. After meticulously documenting her findings in her son's final testament, Doris realized she had to take bold action to ensure the truth's exposure and justice's realization. Deciding on a daring move, she printed a copy of the newspaper containing the full story and emailed it to a prominent local newspaper, trusting they would feature it in their next edition. It was her way of signaling to the military that she refused to allow them to evade accountability for their actions against her son. Fully aware of the risks involved, she steeled herself for the potential repercussions, driven by her unwavering commitment to honoring her son's memory and uncovering the truth. Two days later, Doris's story was splashed across the city's newspapers, eliciting a mix of pride and fear within her. Anticipating the fallout from her actions, she braced herself for whatever might transpire. Soon enough, military officials arrived at her doorstep, ostensibly to commend her bravery. Doris played along, all the while harboring a contingency plan, determined to protect herself and her family by any means necessary. As she was led to a military questioning room by strangers, Doris felt great scrutiny and had to answer their questions carefully to protect herself. She could keep her involvement in revealing the awful realities contained within her son's last message under wraps because she mailed the letter anonymously. Knowing that disclosing any more information could put her in much more danger, she managed to keep her cool under the intense pressure. Fearing she could incriminate herself, Doris sought to steer the questioning without revealing too much. She first pretended to be unaware of the letter and its contents, refusing to acknowledge its existence. But after fifteen minutes of interrogation, Doris felt it was time to show her hand. She chose to hand the police the letter written by her son Bob because she realized that continuing to deny the truth would lead nowhere. She took it out of her inside pocket and set it on the table in front of them hoping its contents would prove her point and make them realize how serious the situation was. The cops looked at one other in confusion, not knowing what to do next. Read it, Doris firmly told them. The letter, she thought, would highlight her candor and the seriousness of the situation, so she eagerly anticipated their response. Their initial amazement left them utterly dumbfounded when they flipped over its pages. A police officer eventually got the chance to say, we will do everything in our power to bring your son back to the United States, but Doris's resolute intervention caught them off. She pleaded with them, repeatedly, for them to understand the gravity of her request. Sitting in quiet contemplation, 
the cops struggled to make sense of Doris's remarks. None of them had ever faced a problem like this before. They decided to give her request their full attention since they knew it was important to respect her son's memory and get justice for his tragic death. After the questioning was over, Doris left with very little details regarding what happened next, which confirmed her assumptions. In the midst of her nervous expectation, all she could do was wait. Knowing that every scenario was remote, she patiently awaited either the coming of the police to apprehend her for disturbing her son's grave or the likelihood that the military would uncover her son's actual remains. Despite the daunting journey ahead, she clung to a glimmer of hope that she could somehow resurrect her son or attain justice for his untimely demise. Fully aware of the arduous path awaiting her, she resolved to remain resolute, prepared to unearth the truth and secure justice for her beloved child. As days stretched into weeks, Doris's optimism waned, her dreams of her son's return dwindling into the realm of impossibility. Yet, amidst the despair, a flicker of hope reignited within her when a missive arrived from the military, revealing they had located her son, albeit uncertain of his condition. Heart pounding with a blend of hope and trepidation, Doris absorbed the contents of the letter, torn between disbelief and longing. Determined to maintain her fortitude regardless of the outcome, she clung to faith, yearning for her son's safe return. A surge of emotion overwhelmed her when the long-awaited correspondence arrived, not necessarily buoyed by the assurance of his survival, but grateful for the semblance of closure it provided. In the ensuing days, Doris found herself perpetually scanning the horizon, anticipation gnawing at her insides. When a sleek, ebony vehicle pulled up outside her home, she held her breath, wondering if this marked the culmination of her agonizing wait. With bated breath, she watched the approaching car, daring to hope that her son might finally be on the threshold of returning home, completely caught off guard by the unexpected turn of events. As the sleek black car glided to a halt in front of her home, Doris caught sight of her son Bob emerging from the vehicle, striding purposefully towards her front door. A surge of elation and relief swept through her, her heart racing when she called out his name and rushed to greet him. As Bob finally crossed the threshold, Doris enveloped him in a tight embrace, tears of joy streaming down her face as she held him close. Despite the tears mingling with his smile, Bob gently disengaged from her embrace, his expression a blend of emotions. Ouch, Doris grinned through her tears as she expressed her immense gratitude for her son's safe return home. Doris and Bob got into a cozy sofa position after they had sobbed and shared updates for a while, preparing for Bob to tell Doris his terrifying story. Doris listened with a blend of shock and wonder as he described every step of his journey, from his deployment to the front lines to his return to their nation. Bob went into graphic detail about the torture he suffered at the hands of his captors, including the beatings and burns he sustained. Still, he never lost trust in his mother's dogged determination to locate him, whether alive or dead. Doris felt her pride and love for her son deepen as she marveled at his tenacity and resolve in the face of such hardship. After watching the story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's story. See you next time.